Each one of us wants the best life has to offer, to reach our highest peak without debts or loans. But harsh reality pops up before we even have a chance. We come up with a million excuses for our failures and relegate ourselves to an unfair life of banality. Why is it that some people fulfill their dreams while others only act as a stepping stone for the former, finding little satisfaction for themselves? From early on in life, our friends and family tell us the secret to success. Get a college degree and your dream job is sure to follow. The steady paycheck will ensure your financial security tomorrow. But in reality, things just don't work that way. A college education is all well and good, but it doesn't guarantee success. Employers prefer to hire workers with specialized practical skills over bright-eyed go-getters without a day of experience. The job market is inundated with average Joes like you. How will you stand out from the crowd? Getting a job depends entirely on you, not your degree. Self-education is the game changer. Without it, you're nothing. When you work for a company, they tell you what to do and you do it, whether you want to or not. As a freelancer, you're driven by what you like doing, and you do it. You become a professional in your field and start to grow creatively above all. And through your work, you learn who you are. My name is Alexander Tyapochkin, and I'm a designer specializing in graphic design. As a freelancer, I don't just work with big companies. Usually they're startups, but there are some companies that have been around for a while. It's a wide spectrum. Freelancing wasn't really a thing when I was at college. I studied IT information technologies, math and physics. I was pretty good at all that, which is why I decided to major in IT. But somewhere around my sophomore year, I realized that I wanted to do something more artistically inclined. We had a computer graphics course at school. You know, an introductory course. I was interested in it and started to study computer design alongside the courses in my degree program. I graduated with a degree in IT, but I already knew I wanted to be a designer. I started working as a creative coder. It wasn't necessarily artistic, but I guess you could say it was close. I didn't have any experience or knowledge in the field, so I couldn't find a job right away at a good company. I found work at a small company that agreed to hire me on. I worked there for a year and built up my resume, but I couldn't grow there because my company was too small. So I started to look for a job at a bigger company than an even bigger one. 
I changed jobs five or six times at the beginning. I had a new job practically every year. But during that time, I grew very quickly. Afterwards, I was able to find a job at a relatively big design studio where I worked for a longer period. We don't go to college to earn chump change working for the man. Living paycheck to paycheck leaves you no room to save up for a better life. Life is a winding road, but despite all its twists and turns, find the path you want to go down. I was able to grow at a company, a big company, but there, growth means becoming an art director or creative director. That really didn't call to me. I was more interested in being hands-on with the creative process. That's when I understood that freelancing was a great way to grow. You remain the creative element, and you start to move up. Maybe not up the career ladder, but in your art. Transitioning to a freelancer was hard to explain. I mean, I didn't have any friends that did it and I didn't know what to expect. There were no guarantees either. When you work for a company, you're guaranteed a steady paycheck. In the freelance world, you lose that safety net and find yourself up against a lot of pressure. My last year working in a company, I did everything I could to make my transition to freelancing as smooth as possible and to give myself a nest egg for at least a year. There was a time when I was still working at the company and doing freelance work at the same time. And it killed me because I was working around the clock. I worked at the office while also taking orders that I wanted to do. That's when I forgot about things like my health and I really struggled. I eventually had to find a solution to those problems, but it's better to resolve them ahead of time. That's why good organization skills and planning several days ahead are really important. Otherwise, everything gets jumbled together and you can't get your work done. I guess I'd say that this style comes from within. 
I paid a lot of attention to what was going on, but the majority of my focus was finding out what I liked, what skills I had, my drawing, and what materials I'd like to use. I just drew a lot. I mean, I drew so much. This style kind of came together on its own. I got some works that weren't so commercially focused. In other words, I began to promote my style more. After a few years, I started to see clients who wanted to use my style in their ads or for commercial purposes. It was a great feeling to have a major brand reach out to me as an artist with my own style that the company wanted to use in their ad campaign. Your first step has to be getting the word out about yourself as much as possible. I did that online and every other way I could. I wanted new clients to constantly see that I was there and to reach out to me. My first portfolio consisted of works that I did primarily at design studios. I also did what I think all designers do. I made up an imaginary client and performed an imaginary order for them. Then I put that imaginary order in my portfolio. It doesn't matter that the client doesn't exist because other potential clients will see what you're capable of. One of my biggest difficulties was speaking with clients. When I worked at studios, I didn't have any experience doing that. I just sat there and did my job. Other people dealt with clients and reported back to me what the client wanted. I did the job and they submitted my work to the client. So when I moved to freelancing, I had no clue how to talk to clients. It took me about a year to overcome that obstacle. That was the hardest part for me. I work best when I'm alone. When I'm by myself, nobody distracts me and I can focus and get my work done quickly and well. Freelancers are isolated. They don't chat with coworkers. In an office environment, you're constantly chatting with someone. But as soon as you start working on your own, the conversations disappear, almost completely. If a person's chatty by nature, they'll have a hard time with that. Being a freelancer requires delving into a lot more of your personal traits, whether you want to or not. No matter what, you have to constantly work on developing yourself. Otherwise, you'll find yourself stuck at some point and you won't be relevant anymore. The ideas you pitch won't be up with the times. Freelancers have to reach a certain professional level so that clients come to them for the results they're looking for. 